it's been really strange and very difficult, especially with COVID-19 and that added a lot of uncertainty uh, to what I had to decide, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, I felt very confident, um, you know, that I wanted to come back and finish my career at the University of Iowa. You know, Coach McCaffrey saw something in me that not a lot of other coaches saw and he took a chance on me and and I, I feel like he's done so much for me in my career that, you know, I think it, w it wouldn't be right to finish it off and, and finish what I started here at the University of Iowa. So I'm very excited to be back with my teammates um, and, and, and look towards, you know, winning a national championship, winning a Big Ten championship. We have big goals in mind. And once we get back on the court, we're going to get start getting to work. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we can we can make make some history this year. Thanks, Luca. So first, we'll take questions for Luca. And then after about 20 minutes or so, Coach McCaffrey will be available for your questions. And then we expect a few of Luca's teammates to be on the call for questions as well. So for the media, if you have a question, at the bottom of Zoom, there's a participant button. So please raise your hand if you have a question. And then when I call on you, just feel free to unmute yourself and we'll go from there. John Sears. Hey, what's up, Luca? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, this has been a weird year with the COVID-19. How much did that play into this decision for you in, in coming back? And did it put more pressure on you knowing that it's still up in the air, whether there might, might even be a college basketball season? You know, it was something I had to consider, um, but I had the right conversations with the right people and, and Coach McCaffrey made sure I had those conversations. And, you know, we all feel strongly that there will be some sort of college basketball season, um, you know, whether that be normal or delayed or whatever the case may be. Uh, we all feel very confident in that. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to make a decision, you know, based on an unknown. You know, if I would have left um, based on, you know, there not being a season out and I would have had to watch, you know, the team play without me, I would have been upset and regretted that decision a lot. So, um, and so, you know, whatever happens, you know, I'm, I, I made the right decision and I won't regret it. John Bowenkamp. Luca, what, in, in the end, what was the final determining factor for you on this decision? You know, I think there were a lot of things. I was just, you know, Practicing with the guys, we had a couple of practices before we got shut down and, and just feeling what that team was like and all the guys out there, just, um, it felt like a team that would be something special um, and, and it would be the best team that I've ever played for and, you know, possibly one of the best teams that, you know, I've ever, I was ever had. And that was a, a very determining factor for me. You know, I had, I felt strongly that, you know, if I were to keep my name in, I would have been drafted. Um, you know, I had a lot of opportunities in the NBA as well as in Europe. Uh, you know, for a lot of money. But at the end of the day, I feel like the teams that, you know, like me this year will like me next year. And they'll like me even more because I've, I've put in a lot of work this summer. I'm going to continue to put in work and I'm always improving my game. And, you know, it was a question that people had is if I could improve my stock anymore. And, and for me, that's not a question for me. I'm always confident in myself and I feel like every summer uh, I make strides and improve my game in some way. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Luca. It sounds like this is a final decision for you. Obviously, in, in two weeks you could make a different decision if you really if you really wanted to. But are you saying that no matter what, you are coming back this year? Yeah, unless the team told me I was the number one pick. Uh, you know, that's the only thing that's going to change anything. But I, I'm pretty solid with where I'm at. You know, I'm very excited. Uh, I want to get to work and I want to bring championships to Iowa City. Scott Doctorman. Yeah, Luca. Uh, how important is the legacy of what you you could accomplish here, the fact that Iowa could uh, go farther than it has in generations. Uh, how, how much of that is the factor in why you maybe decided to come back? You know, a lot of what you said, it, it, it played a part, especially with the team. Just, uh, you know, the team that we could have and the potential uh, of the history we could make is something that, you know, I feel like years from now I would have regretted not being a part of. Um, so um, that definitely played a part. And, and as far as me individually, you know, obviously, you know, every player has, has individual goals that he reached towards. And I feel like there, was, there are a lot of them at the University of Iowa I can accomplish by coming back. And, you know, that wasn't going to be the reason I came back, but it, it definitely helps. David Eichel. 
Hey, Luca, congratulations on the decision. You know, anyone that knows you, loyalty and love are probably two of the biggest attributes that people describe you. How difficult was it uh, to put your kind of heart to the side and really, you know, take into account everything going on and all the factors uh, going into your decision? Was it difficult to put your heart aside? You know, it definitely was. You know, from, from the beginning, you know, I wanted to come back. But, you know, Coach made sure I wanted to go through this whole process and see what opportunities I had after this year. And I think, you know, with my family, we all, you know, really analyzed it. And I talked to a bunch of people that were really close to me, my high school coach, my AAU coach. Um, there were a ton of people, um, even Coach Francis, who was a former assistant coach at the University of Iowa. Um, and then obviously the coach at Iowa as well and my teammates. Um, you know, I talked to everybody and I wanted to make sure I made the most informed decision possible. And, um, you know, I think what I heard a lot from the NBA teams is that, you know, I will be an NBA player when I make that decision. I feel like this year is not the time for me. I feel like next year that's when I will uh, you know, make sure that happens. Josh Christensen. Yeah, Luca, um, I guess, um, how do I put this? I mean, hearing you say that winning the national championship um, is very important to you, even though going to the NBA is important to you, I guess. When did you kind of know that it, you know, that what you guys could do in your senior year was going to be more important to you and the NBA or, or Europe can wait? You know, I think that's something I really realized, you know, a couple of weeks back. Um, you know, I think I definitely something I thought of, um, but obviously when you're a kid, you dream of playing in the NBA. Um, but once, you know, I grew up, I really wanted to be a really good college basketball player. And I always looked up to the guys like Frank Kaminsky and, and other guys who were Tyler Hansborough, people who were legends in college basketball. So I feel like, you know, that was something that, you know, always inspired me as a kid. And I feel like um, just, I love this place too much to leave it uh, early. You know, I love the University of Iowa. I love my teammates, love my coaches. And, uh, you know, I just love what, what has happened to me since I've been here. You know, it was the best decision of my life to come to the University of Iowa. And, Things can be the best decision that I stayed. Tom Caker. Hey, Luca, um, how much of not being able to finish up last year kind of adds to the motivation for this year? You know, it definitely did. You know, obviously not being able to play in the tournament hurt this year, especially with the team we had. I felt like we would have made a run. Um, and that was something that, you know, I think would have been um, something I would have thought about a lot if I had left and, and regretted not being able to have one more chance at, at being in the tournament. You know, you have four chances at it and one was taken away from me. So I, I didn't feel like I, I should take the other one away from myself as well. And I've only been there one time and it was a special, you know, chance. And we had an opportunity to be in the Sweet 16. And I feel like, um, you know, that's the best time in basketball. And, and that's something that, you know, um, I'm going to remember forever. So I want to be a part of that. And, and I'm going to this year. Quinn Douglas. You're muted. Quinn, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry. Uh, about uh, Luca, yeah, the other day, uh, Kofi Coburn and Iota Sumer from Illinois made their decisions. How much did the decisions of your peers and contemporaries go into your decision? And, uh, or if it played a role at all, did you, was your mind made up before then? My mind was made up before then, but, you know, it was obviously – Great to see those guys come back. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun playing, matching up against it, that team. They're very talented. And obviously having those two guys back is going to help them a lot. So you know, I'm very excited. You know, the Big Ten is going to be really, really good this year. It's going to be fun to be a part of. Scott Docterman. Yeah, Luca, how, what kind of feedback did you receive from the NBA evaluators and what you, they wanted you to do um, to improve? And, and how much of that did you take into account when you made the final decision? You know, I, I definitely heard a lot of great things uh, about myself, but there was, you know, obviously the concerns of my, you know, lack of athleticism and, and ability to, you know, move lateral side to side and guarding ball screens and stuff like that. But, you know, there were some teams that saw that my improvement uh, from sophomore to junior year on the defensive end um, and, and my ability to protect the rim at a higher level. But, you know, I definitely learned a lot. You know, teams thought you know, I could be even more of a leader, be more vocal on the def defensive end and on the offensive end. You know, a lot of teams wanted to see me play make a little bit more, be able to pass out of double teams a little bit better and, and uh, you know, find guys off the dribble and different stuff like that. And um, But a lot of a lot of them were, you know, you know, fans, and they really uh, like my game, and, and they thought that, 
you know, at, at some point I will be an NBA player. And, and they were all just talking about, you know, making the right decision and, and the right timing of taking my talents to the NBA. So I think that's kind of something that I took in mind. And, and I felt like this year wasn't that year for me to go that route. Um, but, you know, it was definitely, you know, comforting, you know, when everyone, you hear a lot of people saying like, oh, he's not an NBA player, oh, he's not an NBA player. But when you hear from NBA organizations and they tell you that you are an NBA player, that's, you know, obviously very comforting. And then to hear, you know, the little things that I can work on, they obviously know that, you know, in one summer, I can't go from my athleticism to Russell Westbrook's, but I can improve, you know, a little bit, a little bit every summer and, and get myself to reach my potential as an athlete and I'll be able to be effective. And I have a lot of confidence in myself whenever I do, you know, obviously next year when I take that step to the NBA, that I'll be effective um, because I just, you know, I feel like I can score on anybody. I feel like I can be effective on any court because I play harder than, uh, you know, than anybody who matches up against me. Grant Thacker. Hey, Luca, what was, um, do you remember the specific moment where you decided this is it, I'm coming back? And what was that feeling for you knowing that it was locked in and, and you were going to be back in Iowa City and playing? Sure. Last Wednesday night, you know, I was on the phone with my dad and we both were just, you know, we came to a decision together and that uh, we were really locked in and, you know, we said we, I was going to sleep on it. And, you know, I just woke up the next morning feeling just as good as, and excited as I did, you know, the night before, um, you know, we had had some more talks with NBA teams and, you know, obviously some people, uh, you know, in my family and, you know, we knew the opportunities I had and everything was laid out and I looked at it and it, and it just wasn't, you know, enough for me to leave. Um, you know, I, I think there were some good opportunities on that table, but for me, it just wouldn't have felt right you know, taking them out. I wanted to, you know, come back and, you know, make sure I was a part of something special. Don Doxy. Yeah, Luca, when uh, when did you actually tell your teammates and coaches and, and what was uh, the reaction like when you did that? It was a lot of fun. I, I told my teammates, um, most of my teammates, I told this morning in the team meeting on Zoom uh, about an hour ago. Um, and that was a lot of fun, especially with guys in quarantine. I feel like it was something, you know, to boost everybody's spirit and everybody was really excited. And, um, you know, I told coach uh, Friday night on the phone. And, you know, for me, that was a special moment. It just felt really reminiscent of when I called him to commit, um, you know, to Iowa when, you know, four years ago. And it was just, it was a really special moment for myself. And, um, and so, you know, that was a lot of fun. I told some of my roommates last night um, and that's kind of why, Connor put that tweet out there trying to scare everybody, um, but he he knew all along. So, um, you know, that was a lot of fun. Um, just, you know, seeing how excited everybody was for me. And I know, you know, the people, you know, in this program would have been excited for me either way. And, and that's, a, you know, that's the best part about it. Reggie? Luca, you've talked a little bit about how not being able, not having an NCAA tournament, not being able to finish the Big Ten tournament played a role in making your decision. But last year's Iowa team, over the last few years, this team has garnered a lot of buzz, and this is the most buzz there's really been around the Iowa basketball team in a long time. How much of how much of a sense of continuing to build that tradition at Iowa played into this decision as well? You know, I, I definitely, you know, thought about that. And, you know, obviously this is the most, you know, preseason buzz any Iowa team has had. And that's, you know, also something that played a part. But, you know, I was just telling the guys in the Zoom call that, you know, a lot of that doesn't mean anything until we step on that court and prove what, you know, what people are talking about us. And that's our focus right now is when we get back on the court, you know, we're we're going to work as hard as we did, you know, after that 14 and 19 year when we were set out to prove everybody wrong and show the people that we could be an NCAA tournament team and we could be a contender. Um, so, you know, we've continued to take steps towards that every year I've been here. And, um, you know, this year we're going in with the same mindset. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Luca, um, how, how much of a concern is the COVID situation for you? Obviously, you're in quarantine right now. I mean, are you worried about whether or not there's even going to be a season? And how much of that was a factor? You know, I, I, like I said previously, you know, I, I had the conversation I needed to have to kind of assure myself on that because that was definitely a concern. And no one knows for sure, but, you know, the conversation I had with Coach and, and the people he talked to and Gary Barda and all those people that, you know, I was able to talk to, you know, everyone feels really strongly that we're going to have, you know, a season in some sort of season in the NCAA tournament for sure. So, you know, all of that, you know, was enough for me to just say, you know, um, you know, I, I believe in this. And I, like I said earlier, I couldn't make a decision on the unknown. And, you know, if I made a decision, you know, saying that we're, you know, 
oh, there's not going to be a season, and it was, you know, I would have regretted it. And um, and if there's not a season, you know, I'm going to deal with that, um, you know, um, and, and continue to work hard, and I feel like I'll be fine at the end of the day. Um, you know, one from a year from now, I'll just, you know, grind and work and improve myself as much as I can to help my stock. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very confident there will be a season, as, as are a lot of people, and uh, I think we have enough time where, you know, maybe a vaccine could help or whatever the case may be. There's a lot of ideas, and I think – the NCAA and the Big Ten are going to find a way to make sure, you know, we, we have the ability to play. But, you know, they obviously have our health and safety in, in the forefront of their mind. So, Adam. 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 Hey, Luca. Um, throughout this whole process, how did you manage to turn out, uh, tune out the outside noise and just focus on what's best for you? You know, I think that's – you know, something I've gotten better at, you know, through my career and with all my experience that just, you know, all the outside noise can't infect or can't impact, uh, you know, inside decision. And I think, you know, I needed to talk to people that were really close to me, you know, my family, you know, some of my coaches and, and obviously my teammates and stuff. And, um, you know, I need to make sure those are the voices I was hearing and those are the voices that were going to affect my decision. David Eichel. Hey, Luca, talk about the, the mental growth that you've probably had at least over the last 15 months. And, you know, take me back to three years ago when you first committed to Iowa. Could you have imagined the process kind of go, going the way it did and how did it feel to actually live through it? You know, it's uh, it's definitely, you know, crazy, but it's something I dreamed of. And I, I, I worked hard enough, uh, you know, to, to put myself in, my, in this position. And I had people, I was lucky to have the people around me, the coaches around me to make sure that I developed in, into what I am now. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's very, you know, special for me to be here, but, you know, for me, I'm, I'm never comfortable. I'm never settled. I want to continue to you know, work harder and, and, and grow. And I think, you know, a, a lot of my improvement over these years has been in, in the mental aspect and being able to, you know, be focused and, and everything. And I think that, that, that side of me, you know, helped this year and, and changed. And I think, you know, being able to tune out the outside noise, you know, not worrying about, anything and, and getting over, you know, kind of the anxiety of, of, of performance is something that, you know, definitely helped my career a lot. And I think just over this, you know, three years, um, you know, I've been through a lot at the University of Iowa, obviously, you know, with my surgery and just seeing all my teammates, all my coaches, you know, all the managers, everybody, you know, show up at the hospital and everything like that. It's just, it shows how, you know, special of a place this is and, and, and it's always going to you know, have a place in my heart. And, and that's why, you know, it, it wouldn't have felt right not to come back and, and finish what I started here. John Sears. Hey, Luca, um, you're likely going to be the national preseason player of the year for almost every publication. How do you handle that pressure? And with all the numbers you put up last year, can you take your game? Do you feel like you can take your game to that next level to show those people that, you should be considered as a, as a player of the year. You know, I'm, I'm very confident in myself because of the work I've put in, you know, throughout my career. And I know that I can always improve. Um, so, you know, I definitely, you know, obviously last year I had a really good year, but, you know, for me, I'm a hypercritical guy and I look at the things I did wrong. I look at the free throw percentage. I look at just efficiency in general. I feel like I can improve in a lot of different areas, especially on the defensive end and continue to protect the rim better and guard ball swings better and whatever the case may be. So for me, I always feel like there's room to improve and I, I never will be settled as, you know, I, I feel like I'm the perfect player because I'm not and, and I can improve a lot. So, you know, I will and, and I have been working very hard to do that. Um, but, you know, I'm very, very, you know, excited about next year. I feel like I can, you know, prove a lot of people wrong in terms of the NBA. And I think um, for me, you know, like I said, um, I've grown mentally in, in a, a lot and I think I've been able to tune out a lot of things um, and of the outside noise. And, and that started last year when I was starting to get all the National Player of the Year buzz. And that was kind of midway through the year. I was hearing, you know, four games in, I'm hearing first team All-American. And that's something that I've dreamed of my whole life. And so I was able to tune that out all year um, and focus on what I wanted to do. And this year, what I want to do is, is win championships. And that's what I'm focused on. So I, I don't care about any of the stats. I don't care about any of the awards. I, I want a championship. So, you know, I'm very focused on that. And I think with that mindset, the rest of it will come. Josh Christensen. Yeah, Luca, um, with the COVID situation, kind of take me through, I mean, how back and forth were you one way and then the other just wondering, you know, with the unfinished business, but then 
you know, was there even going to be a season? And then what was going to happen if there was going to be a draft? You know, just, I mean, take me through just how back and forth this thing was and just the the difficulty in trying to make a decision in, in a way. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was always – I would say that the whole time I was always leaning towards coming back. And I think when the when the, the spike happened in the United States is kind of when I was getting a little bit more worried about what would happen in the future. Um, and, you know, obviously it's, it's – um i i had to evaluate that and um um <laughs> and obviously it was very scary but you know like i said i had the conversation i needed to have and i felt confident there would be a season and you know obviously it was back and forth and you know it was even stressful for my dad and, and thinking about what would happen next year um, and so, but, you know, like I said, I feel confident that there will be a season and, and obviously it was a struggle for a little bit where that was wavering, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, like I said, I would regret it if I didn't decide to come back. Any other questions for Luca? If not, we'll move on to coach McCaffrey. That's it. They have the rest. Okay. Uh, Luca, thank you. Thank you all. Yep. Uh, please raise your hand if you've got a question for Coach McCaffrey. Tom Caker. Hey, Fran. Um, what was that phone call like with uh, with Luca when he called you, and how excited were you to hear that news the second time that he was, you know, um, coming coming to you first, you know, four years ago, and now coming back for his senior year? The important thing, Tom, I think, was uh, that he felt good about going through the process the way he did, that he felt like he had done his homework. Uh, that was important to me as well. Uh, he did the same thing through the recruiting process. It was very similar. Uh, he took his time. He listened to the people who love him. And he made a decision, I think, with all of the information that he needed. Uh, and that, I think, makes me feel good. And I think it makes him feel good. Uh, before it was official, you know, we had a conversation, like you said, on Friday. But you know, it was really the conversation today with his teammates that really finalized everything. And I think that speaks to who Luca is. Uh, it wasn't about him. And, and he said very eloquently about what our relationship is like. It's, it's been amazing from the first time I saw him, my relationship with him, with his family, uh, and his role on this team, his ability as a leader, uh, the hardest worker, the guy that continues to get better. I mean, all of that has separated himself to where a decision like this is necessary and creates this much attention. But for him, it goes back very simply to his role in that locker room, his relationship with his brothers uh, on that team. And I think that bond is really why he ended up making the decision he made. And, and that, I think, is always something that makes any coach feel great, that not only did somebody of his caliber come to play for me at the University of Iowa, but the most important thing to him is his relationship with his teammates and that they all have a common goal, and that is to do something special. So you know, I'm just looking forward to, you know, everything – that goes into that, the work, the preparation, and then the competition. Adam Zagoria. Hey, Fran, how you doing, buddy? Good, Adam. Um, you know, some coaches like Coach Patino, I guess, have come out and said uh, they should start the college season January 1st. Where are you on that? What's your view on when the season should start? And, you know, what are you telling your guys about how to prepare for this season? Well, we're preparing for the season as, as if it will start normally. And I think we all have to agree that that might not be the case. Maybe January 1 is, is the magic date. Obviously, there's a better chance that we would have a vaccine by then. Uh, will it be 
conference only games. That's a possibility. I mean, we're all talking about a lot of different scenarios. We have an opportunity from Thanksgiving through to the start of the second semester to maybe do a bubble type event. Uh, maybe that's something we do. Uh, but these these conversations are ongoing. Obviously, everything's on the table uh, with regard to the NCAA tournament, moving it back. You know, that was something that was discussed last year, but there was just too much. There was just too much uncertainty with regard to, you know, COVID. Now I think we have a better handle on it in terms of testing. So maybe maybe the tournament is later. Uh, but I but I I'm certain that there will be a college basketball season season and an NCAA tournament. It may not look like it has looked in the past, but uh, feel pretty confident that it's going to happen. John Bonkamp. Hey, Fran, how much how much would it have helped Luca to work out for NBA teams in person? And how much feedback do you think he gotten and how that will help him this year? Well, I think there's, a, there's, there's, there's actually more to it, John. He didn't have the Big Ten tournament. He didn't have the NCAA tournament. He didn't have the combine. He did have meetings, but he didn't have workouts. So they were able to get to know him, which is great. And I'm glad he had the opportunity to do that. But a lot of times it comes down to a workout where you show up with other players that they might have rated higher. And all of a sudden they say, wait a minute, this guy's better than them. And he moves up. So, you know, I feel for Luca in that regard. He didn't have those opportunities because typically he outplays the guy that lines up in front of him. That's what he does. He would have done it at the combine and he would have done it in individual workouts. And I have no doubt that he would have moved up in the draft. The feedback that he referred to has been very positive, And I think that's great. So they know him. They know his character. They know his work ethic. And the fact that they were very open about what they've seen in regard to his improvement defensively. And I think that's always been the knock on him. And the truth is, when he first got here, he wasn't a great defender. He was a terrific rebounder. But you forget about the numbers that he put up as a freshman were incredibly impressive. But he was a defensive presence last year, both in ball screens and at the rim and certainly on the glass, for the most part, with the exception of one or two games, he stayed out of foul trouble, so he's sliding his feet. He's running the floor, and a lot of times players who are seemingly faster than him don't get down the floor as quickly as he does, so we've seen that. So I really think the impressive thing about Luca and his decision today is his willingness and understanding of what it means to bet on yourself come back, have a kind of year that he knows he's going to have because he's prepared for that, uh, help our team do something special. And then it becomes a situation where there's never a question that he's going to be drafted in the first round. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Fran, obviously your team is going to be considered a top five team heading into the season. I guess what is it that excites you the most about the potential of this team as a whole? Well, I think anytime you have a veteran club, you know what they're capable of uh, in terms of winning on the road, the ability to win close games. Uh, this group has consistently shown their uh, understanding of how to share the basketball, how to move the basketball. I think we were much better defensively last year. We'll be better again. And understanding the importance of playing both ends because we certainly have a potent offensive team. We have a team of competitors that are fearless. And, and I think, you know, Luca alluded to this. Uh, one of the exciting things is how incredibly difficult the Big Ten is going to be. You look at the teams top to bottom, everybody's good. It was the same thing last year. We would have had at least 10 teams in. We will have at least 10, maybe more this year. And I think that's what you sign up for. That's what the challenge is. And I'm really proud of Luca that he is willing to accept that challenge because he knows and understands that he will be the preseason national player of the year and what comes with that. Uh, but he's always welcomed that. 
he's as mentally tough as any athlete I've ever been associated with, and I'm proud to be his coach. Don Doxy. Yeah, Frank, you, you kind of just answered part of my question, but I, I wondered if you'd thought ahead to what the Big Ten is going to be like. Is it possible it will be even more competitive than it has been in the past with, with Iowa and Kofi coming back at Illinois and uh, so many other teams? I mean, is, there, is it possible it's going to be even tougher? Oh, it's definitely going to be tougher. Uh, you know, Illinois is one team, but – you know, it's not just Iowa and Illinois. You know, Rutgers is going to be spectacular. Michigan State is top five team. Wisconsin's got everybody back. They won it last year, and they've got everybody back. You know, so why wouldn't they be somebody that everybody talked about? Uh, Penn State's going to be really good again. You know, even without Lamar Stevens, they're still going to be terrific. I mean, you go top to bottom. Minnesota's going to be much improved. They got some transfers, and they were right on the bubble last year. And had they made a run, it would have been different. Obviously, we would have been the team trying to stop them from doing that because we were going to play them when the tournament was canceled. But it, it's it's a mindset that you have to have in this league, knowing that every time you take the floor, we found it out last year, Fred's team is going to be a lot better at Nebraska. They beat us up there last year. They beat Purdue. Purdue was really good last year. Maybe not an NCAA tournament team, but they certainly were against us. And they've got a lot of really talented people back with a great coach. So, uh, you know, you factor in Northwestern that has everybody back, was a very young team. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see 11 or 12 teams in. David Eichel. Hey, friend, you know, looking up and down your, your lineup right now, you probably have, you know, one of the most versatile, most dangerous offenses in the country. Is this basically, since you started your coaching career, is this kind of how you've your dream kind of lineup for your offense? Because, I mean, by the looks of it, you have great three-point shooters and you got Luka in the post. Is this sort of your dream lineup? No question. And I think that's, you know, I guess you could say it's obvious because I've never had a team with seven starters returning, which sounds like a ridiculous statement, but it happens to be the truth. But I think what you, you factor in is one of the things I said earlier, which is a veteran group with a really – talented core group of freshmen uh, and the versatility component that you've referred to really enables us defensively to, I think, be, be much better, even though we were good last year to be elite. And that's what you have to be if you're going to make a run in the tournament. But we have size, we have length, we have a multitude of three-point shooters. We have really good passers, but most importantly, a willingness to share the ball. And I think the cohesiveness that is required uh, because as you all know, it's a, it's a long journey. And, and we just talked about how difficult this league is and that's what's required. So I think you have a mentally tough veteran group with multiple talents and, and skill sets that blend very well together. Scott Docterman. Yeah, Fran, along those lines, I mean, as you mentioned, you know, toughness last year, but you have an unmatched uh, post score in the last 50 years. You have the national leader and assisted turnover ratio. You have a wing that has NBA potential in Joe Wieskamp, and plus a kind of a perimeter killer in Jordan Bohannon. What's the, what's the ceiling for this team? Is there a ceiling for this team? Well, yeah, and you didn't, fa you didn't mention uh, C.J. Frederick, who led the Big Ten in three-point shooting. So, you know, when you factor all those things together, as you pointed out, Scott, it's, it's certainly a reason for optimism, especially when we saw how Joe Toussaint performed last year. And I've said this, and, and unfortunately people didn't see it last year, Jack Nungy through the summer and the fall was, was one of our two or three best players. And he's seven feet tall. You know, and you factor in Patrick McCaffrey, who's now healthy and, and playing extremely well with the freshman group we have. I've never had a team this deep. Uh, and, and I think we have a, an excellent collection of youth experience, length, quickness, uh, but most importantly, character and mental toughness. And that's what you need to advance in the NCAA tournament because you got to stay connected through some bumps in the road for a very long period of time. The season starts early 
and it may look different. So even more importantly, that group has to be a connected group at both ends of the floor every day in terms of preparation and work ethic. Tom Caker. Hey, Fran, um, how much of an advantage given, you know, COVID limitations, everything that's going on in the world, how much of an advantage does having this veteran team with, like you said, seven starters give you this year? And have any of those young players that you've just gotten on campus kind of shown you they're going to help you right away? Well, the four that, that have been here, Tom, can definitely help us right away. Now, I mentioned eight other players, so it, it, it limits – <clears throat> the minutes in the short run potentially, but you know, you never know who might be injured and you know, who, who might step up. I mean, everything's wide open. Uh, and, and then factor in how excited we are to have Josh Agundale in the United States. He landed a few minutes ago, so he's on his way to Iowa city. So we're happy to get him here. So having a deep club, uh, that understands what it takes. And again, you know, you mentioned the whole COVID thing. What if, what if we're playing in more of a bubble type atmosphere? Uh, even more important that that group have the leadership that we have and be connected the way we are. Because if, you know, you might be out there with, that's it, just, just that group on the floor and that group in the locker room. So who knows what it might look like, but I think, you know, the less variables that you have and the more consistency you have with that roster, I think gives you the reason for optimism, regardless of what the season looks like. Okay, we have time for one or two more questions for Coach McCaffrey, and then we have some of Luca's teammates um, on the line. So I just forgot who I unmuted. Was it Josh? Yep, that was me. All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, Coach, um, how much you, – you as coaches always have to talk to teams, your players, about adversity. How much has this challenged you with the season being canceled last year, with, with it constantly changing? First it was the Big Ten tournament, then just two hours later it was the whole NCAA tournament. And now, you know, wondering – I know you guys say you're confident there is a season, but I guess what has been the challenge just – dealing with something like this and trying to move forward and thinking that and feeling that something is going to happen and it might be different or, or anything like that. The only thing you can do is be transparent with what information you have and then deal with every day that's in front of you. Uh, we're not the only ones that are dealing with difficulty. You know, people are losing their jobs. Businesses are shutting down. Uh, loved ones are getting COVID and we have three players on our team right now who have it. So, you know, we're supporting them and, and recognizing that while this decision is the most important thing, seemingly really the most important thing this morning was making sure our three guys are doing okay. Everybody else is doing okay. And then we go to this decision and then we move forward from there. Uh, Nobody saw an NCAA tournament being canceled, you know, especially when we played 31 fantastic games in the most competitive conference in a long time in NCAA basketball. But it's not only the adversity that we're facing as a group, it's the adversity that we face every day with our families and just going to school. Uh, so we just, we just roll with it. You know, you, you, you deal with the adversity as it comes. It maybe it makes you stronger. It certainly brings you more together. And uh, the information we have, like we said, is that there will be a season. And when that is, we'll be ready. Okay, two more questions for Coach. We'll start with Grant Becker. Coach, a lot of these questions have been about the many different factors as to why you guys might be able to compete for a national title. I was never been ranked higher than seventh in an AP preseason poll. And I know it's only August 2nd. We got a long way to go, but you'll almost certainly be ranked higher than that to start this season and, and very reasonably. So how do you go about capitalizing on this opportunity for yourself, your staff, your players, the fans? I mean, there's, this is 
this is as, as big of an opportunity as Iowa has had. I think the first thing you do is embrace it. We all recognize it. It's a challenge. Uh, but we also have to be honest with one another. Whatever you're ranked in a preseason has no effect on what you're ranked when the season's over. And that's where you want to be, you know, in, in the top five. You want to be, be in the final four. You want to contend for a national championship. It's great to talk about it. And, yes, where I think we have the ability to do it. But there are a number of other teams that have the same ability. And we have to be respectful of our opponents. And that's why the critical thing is what we talked about, work ethic, staying connected, playing both ends of the floor, remaining to be unselfish, being able to overcome a tough loss, a bad loss. It's not going to be perfection. We never expect it to be perfection. Uh, but we do expect uh, effort, concentration, commitment, and unselfishness. And that team has shown that we have the ability to have all of those qualities, and that gives us a chance. Reggie Edwards. Coach, going back to, to Luca and the decision that he's announced today, a lot of players, when they have the buzz that he has, decide to go ahead and go pro and enter the draft. How important is it in the classroom? What does it say uh, about him and how proud are you that he's coming back to finish his college career in the classroom as well as on the court? Well, the thing about Luca, is he's, he's just an incredibly special person. Uh, He's, number one, incredibly confident in his ability to better himself. And, and a lot of guys will take the money that's in front of them. And he turned down a substantial amount of money to come back and compete with his teammates, with his brothers, like I said. Education has always been important to his family. And getting his degree is something that, unfortunately, today is kind of dismissed sometimes when somebody has an opportunity to make money and it's not like you can look them in the eye and say that's a really dumb idea to go take seven figures uh, knowing that you can come back and get your degree but the fact that he wants to get it he wants to finish he's a very good student came from a very good high school parents made sacrifices to send him to the Murray school for that reason and they're preparing him as well as our institution is preparing him for life after basketball. Luca is a big picture guy. He's looking at everything. And, uh, and it's wise to do so. And I encouraged him to do so. And, and I just couldn't be more excited or thankful for his commitment to me, my staff, and his teammates. Okay, thanks for your time, coach. We'll let you go. Thanks, um, Matt. You got it. So we have, I know we got Connor, Joe Wieskamp, Joe Toussaint, CJ Frederick on the line, Jack Nungy. Um, if you've got a question for any of those athletes, please raise your hand. David Eichel. Yeah, Connor, when did you decide to put out the tweet last night? And were you just staring at your phone, uh, waiting for all the reactions to start pour, uh, pouring? Yeah, so pretty much we were uh, we were all talking last night. And, um, you know, Luca, it, it was honestly a little bit of Luca's idea. Um, but we were like, oh, you know, should we should we try to mess with the fans? Because, uh, you know, they I mean, you should see, you know, some of my mentions on Twitter. Uh, they're pretty insane. Um, a lot of people speculating, threatening. I mean, you, you, you go up and down the line. I mean, it's pretty much everything. Um, but yeah, so that's why I was like, you know what? I feel like it'd be pretty funny if we do something. Um, and I, and Luca was like, dude, you should do it. You should do it. Absolutely. And so that's kind of, that's kind of why I did it. Just, uh, you know, try to get a little bit of a reaction, um, scare the people a little bit, but not, I didn't want to give anything away either. So. John Sears. Uh, yeah, question for uh, Joe Wieskamp. Um, your reaction when Lucas said that he's coming back to school, this has to be 
one of the more exciting days for, for Hawkeye basketball, but what does this mean for this team in this next year, assuming there's a season? Uh, and does this make you guys even hungrier? I mean, to get out there and want to prove something. I mean, absolutely. Obviously it was huge news um, for us as well as the fans, but he's just such a big leader for us. Um, not only on the court, as you guys can see, but off the court, um, he's constantly communicating with guys, com communicating with guys um, and motivating guys to get in the gym. So I think, just having his presence in the locker room um, with his experience as well as, I mean, we're a pretty veteran team. So um, it's good to have his leadership back. I think that that's one of the most important things. Tom Kaker. Hey, uh, CJ and Jack, uh, kind of maybe a health update on both you guys and, and how excited are you to have uh, Luca back with, uh, with you guys for another year? Well, let's start with CJ. Yeah. Um, so my health update, I'm doing really well. Um, I'm out of my cast. I'm out of my crutches. Um, I'm able to start putting a lot of pressure on that foot and start being able to walk and do some rehab. So I'm really excited um, with the way I'm healing. And, uh, you know, I should be on the court within the next three or four weeks and in, into September. So uh, not too bad there. And then obviously bringing Luca back, um, it just brings a whole different uh, dimension to our team. You know, um, he's the most uh, – dominant player last year in college basketball. So obviously if you bring that back, um, you know, we're going to be really excited about that. Jack. Yeah. So, um, you know, my rehab's been going really well, uh, right before, you know, we just got quarantined. Um, I was doing workouts with, uh, coach Spraw and Wheezy. So, I mean, I'm starting to move again on the court, doing a bunch of drills and stuff and my knee feels really good. I'm um, still a couple weeks away from uh, being able to go fully live and stuff like that, but um, everything's going really well. And obviously uh, having Luca come back, you know, that's huge for our team. Um, you know, he's a great leader and uh, I'm really excited to be, be able to battle with him again this year and practice and stuff like that. So. Uh, Don Doxey. Yeah, for uh, for Connor, you there's a lot of talk about how you guys are going to be a top five team entering the season and everything. How hard is it to to set that aside and still focus on on doing what you guys need to do? I think that that's kind of what we um, we we we've, we've talked about that, and I think you know it might be hard for for some teams. I think with our team, we are all extremely motivated and mentally tough, and we um, you know we all kind of, you know, we agree on, you know, the fact that nothing, nothing is going to be given to us just because of our preseason. Ranking. You know, this is all, this is, this is all going to be because of our hard work this upcoming season. And we are all extremely hungry. Um, we have been, and that's, you know, that's how we played last year. You know, I think people will notice that um, just in terms of, you know, the kind of, the kind of team that we had last year in terms of, you know, our competitiveness and, you know, just the, the way that we go out and, you know, go at it every night. Um, and, you know, I think that that's going to be what, you know, for us, why I think that we'll, we'll rise to, uh, to expectations because we are, you know, we're going to be people that work just as hard as, you know, people are expecting us to. Joey Danya. Hey, Joe, just um, wondering if you can update us kind of on how everyone's doing health-wise with, with COVID-19, having three of you guys test positive. Is everyone doing okay and seem like, like they're on the mend? Joe Wieskamp? Uh, yeah, it seems like everyone's doing pretty good. Um, the couple guys that did have it had some symptoms for a little bit, but um, it seems like they're recovering after that. And then the rest of the teams... I'm um, doing well, just kind of pushing through this quarantine and finding ways in which we can work out and stay connected through it. It's obviously unfortunate we have to be quarantined, but have to be safe. Scott Dotterman. Yeah, this is for Connor. Um, you guys were so connected offensively last year and in part because of, of you, but then everybody. Uh, what can, how far can this offense go now that you're pick, you're bringing in, you know, Jack is back and then you have uh, Jordan back and, and of course, Luca, uh, how much better can this offense be when it was one of the most efficient offenses in the country last year? Yeah. You know, I think, um, for us with, 
bringing back all the pieces that we have in terms of, you know, adding Jack back, adding Jordan back, Patrick, who is a really versatile offensive player. Um, and then the freshmen coming in, this, this is something we just added a bunch of dimensions to an offense that was already, you know, very, very good. Uh, you know, I think that the, the reason that we are so connected offensively is because we have such a good team chemistry off the court as well as on the court. You know, we all, we all trust each other. We know, you know, what everyone is good at, um, you know, whether it's, you know, we're, you know, we're going to push the ball. So we're going to do that. We're going to try to score quickly. If not, we have a ton of weapons in the half court as well. And it's going to be a seemingly endless uh, number of production guys off the bench that, you know, come in as well. I mean, everybody that comes in adds another dimension to our offense. Everybody can score in different ways. We have shooters, we have passers, we have post low post scoring. Um, and, you know, I think that when you have all of these weapons, it's, it's really hard for teams to plan defensively against you because, you know, there's just, there's nothing, you know, if they take away one thing, something else is going to open up, you know, and, that, and no one, we already know, nobody can guard Luka one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, if that, as long as that stays true, I think that there's just going to be things open for us a lot of the time. Quinn Douglas. This one is for any of the players that want to answer with COVID-19 and the restrictions you guys have for your workouts. How have you guys handled that with uh, all the uh, different restrictions you guys have and the fluidity of the situations with uh, COVID-19, along with you guys having to pause workouts? How do you think the player, you guys as players have handled that? I'd say Joe uh, Connor or Joe Wieskamp, either of you will want to answer that. I think the biggest thing is we had to get creative. Um, a lot of guys were shut out of gyms, um, maybe had to shoot, you know, in their driveway, do ball handling, um, use different equipment that usually wouldn't be used as like weightlifting um, and kind of just make stuff up as you go. And I think our strength coach did a good job of sending us workouts, some body weight stuff um, that we could do um, in the meantime. It's just, most of it was just kind of being creative with what you could do. John Sears. Yeah, this is for CJ. Um, with with all the expectations coming in for for Hawkeye basketball, is it going to be hard to kind of temper those as a team and you know not uh, not get too high because this is going to be one of the most hyped seasons in a long, long time for Iowa basketball. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, like Lucas said earlier, this is. I mean, this has got to be one of the best teams I've ever played on. And I'm sure the guys would say that as well. Um, but that's just something um, we all talk about as a team. You know, like Connor said earlier, um, the expectations of us being really good, you know, we're going to put the work in as well. So, you know, we have a drive to uh, be even better, be the best we can be. So it's just going to make us work harder. Um, but also, um, we like to remain humble and um, not try to get, um, not try to listen to what everybody says. David Eichel. Yeah, CJ, you being the shooter that you are, you guys get Jordan back. You guys, you know, the versatility of the offense. I mean, is this basically a dream offense for you? Because there seemed to be a pretty big target on your back near the end of the season where guys were guarding you a lot closer, uh, switching a lot more, being a lot more aggressive. So, I mean, is this just going to help you uh, take your game to the next level next year? Yeah. Um, you know, everyone on the court is going to be able to score the ball. So it's going to be really hard to just, focus on one person, especially with Luca back. So I think the, the floor is going to be spread a lot more. Um, you know, our shooters are going to be able to, you know, get, get some looks. Um, and also I think people don't realize how much talent we have coming in that, that haven't played, you know, Jack Nunji is going to be able to even spread the floor much more. Patrick McCaffrey's going to be able to do the same as well. And, um, you know, Joe T the way he can uh, like push the ball on the break and all that. So we just have such a dynamic team and it's going to, it's going to help us a lot. Corey. Uh, for either Connor or uh, Joe, talk about um, just with the two guys coming back with IO and Kofi coming back and the rivalry you guys had last year was pretty intense. Um, how much do you look forward to that this year to play in Illinois? And I know uh, IO made the comment, he doesn't like you guys. You guys don't like them. It's a mutual thing. How much fun is that going to be? I, I think it'll be fun. Um, you know, I think that 
you know, those games are always always a grind, you know, as, as are, you know, I mean, the rest of the league as well. Um, the league's going to be good all, all around, as, as everybody knows. Um, you know, both of them returning. I mean, you know, I, we, we beat them last year. Uh, probably, you know, could have beat them twice. Um, and we got everybody back. And, you know, they, you know, Feliz being the player that he was for them, they, you know, they lost him. You know, he, he was a very, very key piece for them. So they'll probably be hurt in that regard. But I still think, you know, that, you know, for us and them, it's going to be definitely going to be a good rivalry. Uh, and, you know, but like I said, you know, that goes for that goes for the whole league. Um, you know, there's there's teams up and down. You know, I mean, Rutgers is going to be really good. Michigan State, Michigan, they're going to be good. Wisconsin's got everybody back. Indiana's going to be really good. I mean, we, I can keep going. Uh, the league's just going to be going to be tough. There are no no easy games at any point. And, uh, you know, but that's that's what that's what we signed up for. And you know, that's what that's what we're excited for. Tom, Connor, how um, how did Patrick put on all that weight, and uh, how much of a different player is he uh, now with that weight on him? You know that that was uh, I got to give the credit to, you know, all the probably you know him, my dad, who always is making him eat all the time. You know, bringing him stuff down to eat at pretty much any points of the day. When he's not hungry, he's still forcing him to eat. <laughs> uh, uh, Coach Max. Um, uh, nutritionist here, Kira, uh, and, you know, I think that that's just, you know, over quarantine, you know, he was just, he was eating, he was working out. Um, and we, we did have some, we had some, you know, weight equipment at home that we put in and I, I know he was in there lifting and, you know, that, that I would say that that's just, you know, kind of the, the, the work ethic that he's shown this in this entire time has been really, really fun to see. Um, and, you know, I think that you guys will all, you know, be able to be able to see that once, once he gets on the court. Josh Christensen. Yeah, this for any of the guys that uh, want to answer this. Um, I mean, how much have you used not being able to really finish last year, the unfinished business now with Luca's decision, how much is that driving you even more to, to, to kind of show, you know, that this is what we could have done, or this is what we know we can do this year. Let's start with uh, Joe Wieskamp. Yeah, obviously it was pretty unfortunate we couldn't play in the NCAA tournament. That's what you um, work for the whole season is to get to that point. So, um, but at the same time, no team was able to experience that. So it's not like we're losing any experience per se because no team had that. But obviously that that drives us that much more to want to do well um, and advance even further um, into the tournament. Because obviously uh, my freshman year, we made it to the round of 32 went to OT against Tennessee, almost made it to the Sweet 16. So um, all those things kind of build up and it's just going to drive us even more to want to go farther this year. Uh, just a reminder, we do have Joe Toussaint on the call. Does anyone have a question or two for Joe Toussaint? Scott? Yeah. Uh just one quick question, Joe Toussaint. Uh, just, I guess, talk about your pros your off season. What what you think of last year? You had some really high moments, and and how do you think you can fit into this team, especially with uh, Luca coming back and and Jordan Bohannon coming back? Um, yeah, uh, last year was definitely a learning experience for me. You know, uh, not a lot of people, uh, you know, start as a freshman, and um, I just took that, you know, um, as a you know, as a way to uh, get better each and every day. Um, I did have some high moments and I did have some low moments and um, I appreciated everything, you know. Uh, now looking back, you know, I needed that and um, just using that to uh, push forward and uh, get better each and every day. And uh, as Luca coming back, you know, um, it's just a great, you know, it's great news, great news to hear. Uh, and we're just ready to uh, get back to work, to be honest. Okay, we got time for one or two more questions for the guys, if any of you guys have questions. If not, going once, twice. Okay, guys, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.